therefore i decree and declare anyone here who has come to the end of a season i call upon my god the god of my covenant i push you to a new season in the name of jesus christ please help those under the anointing i push you to a new season new financial seasons new spiritual seasons there are some of you in ministry there are certain graces you did not carry before but god is about to be announcing you in new ways greater mantles greater new anointings by the by the spirit of god i stand by this road and i shift you step into new seasons step into new dimensions step into new seasons climb that ladder in destiny in the name of jesus christ step into new seasons in the name of jesus christ some of you this is the season you will encounter the mantle of your destiny until now you are elisha but you have been a farmer whereas in destiny you are a prophet i relocate you by the mantle of your destiny anywhere you are operating now that is not consistent inside outside i stretch my hands i call upon the god of my covenant step into those mantles find the mantle for your destiny find the mantle for your destiny Please make sure you are praying don't waste your time you came here for an encounter i know what i'm saying i know what i sense from my spirit i tell you there are people here where you are is not the mantle of your destiny has been searching for you you are a prophet what are you doing in the farm you are a kingdom financier what are you doing around i stand again by the god of my covenant and i declare be relocated to the place of destiny and anyone deceiving you and wasting your time and wasting your destiny i clear them out of your life esther was ordained to be queen but she was in shushan ruth was ordained to be part of the lineage of jesus but she was somewhere experiencing a cause peter was a fisherman whereas his destiny was an apostle pray in one minute align me oh god to the place of my relevance the place of my destiny i'm tired of escorting others i'm tired of wondering what to do with my life your assignment is as important listen to me your assignment if you do not locate the place of destiny you will keep escorting others you will get angry you will get offended your breakthrough your your celebration your relevance is in that place of your assignment pray father tonight it says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me it has been written of you
Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come again. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Oh, Esther, your season has come. Oh, Ruth, your season has come. Oh, Peter, your season has come. Oh John, your season has come. Elijah, your season has come. Oh, my season has come. Oh, my season has come. Oh, oh, oh. Your season has come. Oh, 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 your season has come. Oh, oh, oh your season has come. Oh, oh, I'm seeing a grace for prophetic psalmistry. There are many of you, you have been called into this dimension of the prophetic psalmistry. Songs you did not write coming from heaven. I stretch my hands. Lord, where are they? Inside and outside. Songs that become ladders for the end time. Ladders into the throne room. Ladders for encounters. I declare may that grace, may that mantle rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, psalmistry by the Spirit, the Davidic order of worship. Take that grace now, in the name of Jesus Christ. You're not wasting your time. You came to church. Just pray in the spirit for one minute. Undivided spiritual attention. This is for kingdom come. This is for my destiny. This is for all connected to this grace. Kela baka reka toshko to prande ke deleketa, shkebe reka te baka ta prosko to ko to baka teleketa, shime ke te leka shko to prando ko to badiata. Number two, I want to pray. There are spirits that stand at the gates of new seasons and don't allow people cross. I tell you this, there are spirits that stand at the corridors of your next season financial seasons spiritual seasons kairos moments it takes the power of the holy spirit 
to uproot these devils out of your way he says say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves i decree and declare every covenant and any ordinance of darkness stopping men from stepping into their seasons i come by fire and in the name of jesus christ i declare those altars are destroyed now destroyed now destroyed now destroyed now destroyed now help them please every spiritual pattern that wants you to repeat what you happened to your father repeat what happened to your mother tying you to the experiences of your territory i come by the road of the higher priesthood i decree and declare be delivered now be delivered now be liberated now My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil my head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn i am anointed with fresh oil The mighty power of God. New seasons. New seasons. New seasons. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Remember not the former things neither consider the things of old remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old for behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing this is a prophetic word for someone this is a prophetic word for a family you came to church to hear this word the lord is saying remember not the former things stop giving explanations forget the former things that that which is coming will be a worthy compensation that which is coming will be a worthy compensation stop regretting yesterday there are greater plans in your tomorrow plans that outweigh that which you have seen for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time the bible says are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us Just allow yourself in a minute or two to just soak in this glory sometimes we are too distracted and when god shows up like this we waste those opportunities do not make the mistake of jacob in the glory i will stand i will stand and lift my hand it's in your glory i'll receive every miracle you have for me it's in your glory we will stand we will stand and lift our hands ah. 
in the glory we'll receive every miracle you have for us Lord we believe you we thank you Lord Jesus for this hour of visitation you have come like you always do to change us to lift us to impart upon us unusual graces Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. You are even offended, but one thing is needful. That Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet. We trust you, we love you, we honor you, we believe in you. This is why we are here. Every miracle you have for us. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head but thou O oh lord are shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory and the lifter of my head but thou O oh Lord a shield for me the glory and the lifter of my head Father, forever, we declare that you remain mighty in our midst. This house will remain a conducive atmosphere for your presence, for your power. We decree and declare that we will continue to love you, continue to serve you, to stand in partnership with your spirit as you build as you make as you restore as you transform as you empower indeed we are changed we are changed huh. we are changed we are changed who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty your mighty battle we call you this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle for thine is the Forever and ever. Amen. Tonight, move upon us. Move upon us. Oh, we say amen, amen, amen. Let it be so. Let it be done in this earth 
as it was and as it is in the heavens amen to my lifting amen to my restoration amen to my rising amen to the multiplication of grace as a family we declare amen amen we are believers of your word let it be O oh god blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance You see beloved people of god one of the things that you are learning every time you come you are learning the ways of the spirit we are a people who love god we are a people who are excellent and organized but you must realize that the secret to what you have seen and you experience every time is our flexibility when the holy spirit comes he does not come here as a tenant he comes here as the lord of sabaoth the lord of hosts we are only active participants we follow as he leads for if he does not lead we have nothing to do moses said do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us you can fake power but you cannot fake presence no a native doctor can give you power but he cannot give you presence that presence factor is the distinguishing factor moses said how shall they know that where people separate and he said i will go with you my presence will go with you and i will give you rest I will bring you into your sabbath i will give you rest glorify your son tonight oh god glorify the saints that will bring you glory through our lives in jesus name please be seated the lord bless you by the principles of God's kingdom. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's lift up our hands and give him praise, worship and bless him. Indeed, God is said to arise, arise over my life, arise over your life. Is someone blessing him? He is a God of signs and wonders, the Savior, the Redeemer. He is here to manifest his power, wisdom, grace. Thank him in advance to be an extraordinary night for your sake. Shabaykato sabranda gabalako sabrehisiash. Everywhere within this auditorium, all the overflows connecting online, we're lifting up hands in praise to say thank you, Jesus. Thank him for the privilege to experience this moment of signs and wonders. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're still going to pray one prayer, Psalm 107 verse 31. Psalm 107 verse 31, it says, Oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Can you turn this to be your prayer point? Father, thank you. Go ahead and thank him. Give him quality thanks for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and now November ending. Tell him thank you. It's only happened well for me because of your grace. It's only happened marvelous for me because of your mercy. Thank him for koinonia global impact mighty manifestations of his grace from nation to nation region to region as a global family let's tell him thank you we are not ungrateful 
not unmindful of his kindness. Savior Redeemer, God of signs, God of wonders, God of healing, God of deliverance, the breaker, the opener of closed doors, the holder of the key of David, that opens a door that no man can shut, and shuts a door that no man can open. We give you thanks. Now ask him to visit you tonight. Do something in my life, oh God, that becomes an evidence that I encountered you. Someone desperate, someone hungry, someone determined. Go ahead and pray. Arise in a way that becomes clear to all that I have experienced your power. Arise in a way that becomes a testament in my life that you are indeed strong and mighty over me. Ask him to arise. Ask him to arise as a God of signs, wonders, miracles. Let there be a performance in my life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Shout a believing amen. May my God surprise you tonight. May God write something upon your life that only he can write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Visit us, O God. Give us mighty and marvelous encounters tonight. And to you be all the glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be gloriously seated. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I welcome you to our miracle service for the month of November. And this is the final miracle service for this year that God has declared as our year of open doors. We have seen His hand. Hallelujah. I believe in Jesus with all my heart. I believe in his power and I believe in his grace. God has been faithful over our lives and tonight God will surprise someone. In Jesus name. We have a lot to do tonight. My assignment is to build faith um, and to inspire you as we prepare to see that which God has preordained for this night and you will not lose your portion in Jesus name I thought to bring as a guide to our minds and our understanding what to expect from a service like this you would be surprised that many believers come to the presence of God and they come for such a powerful service like this but if they are not taught and guided to know the things that are available and how to position your faith, it is possible that in the midst of the manifest presence and power of God, many people may walk out of this place, sadly, not receiving anything. And so I thought to dedicate tonight to charge our hearts. What exactly is a miracle service? I want you to listen very carefully because the real miracle starts when you understand what this is about i gave two definitions here and i want you to pay attention number one a miracle service is a moment dedicated by god to visit his people and to bring solutions to their concerns their fears and their troubles listen again every time in god's presence is truly a miracle service but there are moments where by his wisdom and his preordination, he dedicates moments where he comes to visit his people. So a miracle service is a moment dedicated by God to visit his people 
and not just to visit them but to bring supernatural solutions to their concerns their fears and their troubles zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17 the bible says the lord in the midst of thee not the lord seated in heaven not the lord somewhere the lord thy god who has come in the midst of thee is mighty and because he has come in the midst of thee he will save he will rejoice over thee with joy he will rest in his love he will joy over thee with singing so a miracle service is a moment dedicated by god to visit his people and to bring solutions to their concerns their fears and their troubles what is a miracle service a miracle service is an encounter with god where he reveals his power and his glory in the midst of his people an encounter with god where he reveals his power and he reveals his glory in the midst of his people have this at the back of your mind many believers casually come to church they casually come for such a mighty and marvelous service like this well i'm just going to church i was invited by some good fellow perhaps my family member and i'm here just to fulfill the ritual of church have it at the back of your mind that god is in this place tonight visiting us to bring solutions to our concerns to bring solutions to our fears to bring solutions to our problems our troubles the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord using a platform like this delivered him from them not some from them all are we together now what is available in a miracle service you will be surprised that many believers cannot answer that question the bible always likens prophetic gatherings like this to a spiritual feast to a supper as we find in luke 14. luke chapter 14 we're reading 17 then for sake of time we'll jump to 21 and read all to 24. luke 14 17 then 21 a service like this in the mind of god as revealed in the ministry of jesus is a feast a banquet and a supper and it's important for you to know when you go to an occasion a well organized occasion among the many things they do is before the meals come they serve you with something called a menu am i right on that and it captures a detail of the available meals it is within your power to choose they tell you this is available that is available so that you know you have an idea luke 14 and he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden come for all things are now ready you don't invite people when you are still preparing you don't invite people to a banquet when the kitchen is yet to finish all the things that they have to do when all things are set the table is set then you can invite them jump to verse 21 for time's sake he invited a few other people and they gave all kinds of flimsy excuses and so on and so forth so that servant came and showed his lord these things listen carefully then the master of the house being angry that those that were invited refused to show up he said go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring the following the poor the maimed the halt the blind what kind of feast is this usually in jewish days these kinds of people were not even allowed in the city they were kept outside of the city because they were termed unclean but there is a kind of feast there is a kind of banquet that is particularly made for these kinds of people the poor the maimed the halt the blind reading to 24 next verse and the servant said lord it is done so he called on these groups of people and they came he said yet there is still room 23 and the lord said go to the highways and the byways or the hedges and compel them any them you find 
confused them, lost them, defeated them, like the men of the men who came to David in the place of Adullam. Any them you find who are available, they may not be lame, they may not be weak, they may not be part of the first set of people, but there is still room for them. A miracle service is beyond the healing service. A miracle service is beyond the deliverance service. A miracle service is a service that is open to anyone who desires to feast and join the power, the grace, the wisdom of God. All those who had these conditions were called and they said there is still more room. I may not be sick. I may not be oppressed. But how about confusion? How about the age-long captivity? How about the limiting beliefs that have kept me? Let's finish that scripture. And the Lord said, go to the highway, the byway, compel them to come, that my house shall be filled. Final verse. For I say unto you, that none of those people who rejected this offer shall taste of my supper. When God calls men, it's a feast, it's a banquet. What is available in a miracle service like this? Number one, God's power to save. I'm listing for you the spiritual menu that is available in this place tonight. God's power to save. Number two, what is available in such a prophetic gathering like this? God's power to heal. Luke 5, reading 17, then we jump to 24 and end at 26. Luke 5, 17, we jump to 24, ending at 26. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, I'd like you to look closely here. There's a lesson I want to bring out. That there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town in Galilee, Judea, Jerusalem. And the Bible records that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Take note. Not present to heal one person, present to heal as many. Now jump to verse 24. The Bible says, talking about one man who was sick of palsy, but that he may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. And he said unto the sick, one man, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy couch, and go into your house. 25. And immediately he arose. The Bible says the power of God was present to heal them, but only one person was healed in that meeting. The power of God did not come to heal only one person. It was available for any them whose hearts were open and hungry. He took up that whereupon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying God. Final verse 26. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear saying we have seen, we have seen strange things today. Can you imagine that? Many of them desired to be healed, but they did not know how to connect to the healing power of God. They were celebrating and rejoicing with those who were sick. And as wonderful as that is, and that was, they went away, some of them perhaps, not having their healing. It's important for you to know that in a spiritual banquet like this, called a miracle service, God's power to heal is available. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus that tonight's healing will not just be for a few people, but it will be for as many people who are tired like the woman with the issue of blood having spent all her earnings. She was not an irresponsible woman. This woman worked hard and she saved money only to use it to take care of her health. Her passion to remain, her passion to not die made her to turn and become a poor woman again. What is available in a miracle service like this? God's power to deliver. The Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. And the sons of Jacob, it says Obadiah 1 and verse 17. The sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. It is first deliverance, then holiness. Then the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. What is available in a miracle service like this tonight? Illumination. Like you are receiving now. Light from heaven. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says arise shine. 
for your light is come our precious worship team sang it so beautifully charging us to arise hallelujah it is not only god that will arise you too you will arise because the reason why he has a reason is so that you will also arise is that true yes but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light illumination an explanation of the issues of concern alongside the way out you see that in the presence of god and in a spiritual banquet like this god brings light to the dark areas of your life as the word of god is coming now god is bringing perspective clarity understanding you may be knowing why you are where you are but it does not just give you information as to why you are where you are he shows you through the lens of scripture the way out of any trouble the way out of any calamity i prophesy to you someone is finally finding his way out in the name of jesus christ i say it again someone who is hungry and desperate is finally finding his way out way out of losses way out of retrogression way out of shame way out of reproach it happens it happens for others until it gets to your turn it looks like there is a mysterious force that sits on your way going forward and you are not able to go forward there is always a way out the bible says and jesus himself knew what to do it is dangerous to not know what you do tonight god is showing someone what to do so in a spiritual feast like this god's power is available to save even to the uttermost god's power is available to heal god's power is available to deliver god's power is available to bring light illumination direction what else is here restoration ah god's power to restore yes sir to compress time to restore crying because you lost money crying because you lost relationships crying because as at the time opportunities came you were not wise enough to know how to maximize them now you are wiser and yet the opportunities have gone can god bring it back again welcome to a banquet where your restoration is part of the menu in the name of jesus christ i hope you believe that i'm not joking if you don't believe in the god of restoration your life will be bitter mara it will be bitter in many regards because can i tell you life does not wait for you to be wise to maximize it it just passes if at the time the opportunity came you didn't know god enough you didn't understand the kingdom enough that opportunity just passes like that and so god says i will restore not just the things i can restore the years for someone you literally wasted your january till october in confusion foolishness and pride last week you repented what do you now do with the days left there is a god who restores in the name of jesus there is a god who restores hmm. you believe this there is restoration what else is available here guidance and direction this is powerful i hope you know that speed is useless without direction anybody who fires on all four cylinders on the road is usually someone who has been able to have a clear direction every time you are confused perhaps you are trying to look for a house and you are not sure which is which the first thing that suffers is your speed you have to slow down until you ascertain the house you are getting to only a foolish person will be speeding in confusion there is a relationship between speed and direction are we together so when the devil wants to mark your life at a moment he brings an atmosphere of confusion around your life and with that confusion your speed is impeded and i taught you that the unit of destiny is time whatever takes dominion over your time has taken a major portion of your life and destiny the unit of destiny is time this is why god comes with guidance and direction 
for someone you can be seated here and tonight while this word is coming as the anointing comes you may not fall you may not jump you may not shout but you will just hear in your spirit the united kingdom is where your destiny is that's it direction has come for you i hope you know that when god speaks the power to make what he says comes with it too it is only men who speak and yet don't have the power to back what they say if god tells you go left the power to take you to go left comes with his word son of man stand up upon your feet ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 and i will speak unto you he gave him an instruction but the man did not have the power to comply verse 2 says and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and i heard It's one thing to want to go where you where. listen everybody's destiny hear me please there is the bible says i think that should be um hebrews 10 and verse 7 if i recall it says lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will god is not scratching his head you will hear me say wondering what to make out of your life you are not the only one he created out of the eight billion people on earth i can tell you everybody has a destiny in christ it is only a wicked god who will bring you to the scene and lead you to keep roaming around freelancing your idea about what to make about your life there are many people here you may not be sick but you need to sort this issue of confusion and destiny they wake up in the morning absolutely nothing driving their lives absolutely they sit today and say i'm having something for ministry tomorrow i'm having something for business um next tomorrow well i don't know and they live their lives just getting old with no mark upon the earth no mark upon the sands of time tonight should be that night you get angry and say lord i am tired of escorting men while making constructive progress towards destiny what did you create me for i can't be here to waste time celebrating birthdays with no vision celebrating birthdays with no direction my confusion started at 13 now i am 45 still confused guidance and direction are we together yes there are literally people right now i want you to listen to me carefully there are literally people right now confused nobody is getting blessed because of your life no one is eating because you are alive no one is serving jesus because you are alive you didn't build any school you didn't build any organization you are not even you are nothing at all wake up in the morning it's night let's go to bed wake up in the morning again it's night let's go to bed what do we have today social media five minutes turning to five hours what is trending now by evening i'm hungry you go and eat you don't have money because you are not visionary you beg in any case life just goes if you are god will you design such a life for an individual every spirit of the waster wasting your time wasting your life this may not be for everybody but from the depth of my spirit i'm prophesying to someone who has been wasting the gift of life wasting the gift of time admiring those who are making a mark in destiny i pray for you among the many things that will rest on you tonight a clear direction of your purpose and destiny <laughs> hallelujah hear me jesus is very as a revelation of god is very unapologetic about his hatred for unfruitfulness two stories in the bible demonstrate the pain that god feels every time we're unfruitful the first was the story of the fig tree it was not a parable he came and he saw a fig tree having green leaves but never produce figs and he cursed it he said let no food grow on thee henceforth forever second story was the story of the parable of the talents he gave one five talent he gave one two talent he gave the other one talent you would think he would be satisfied after all out of three there was two over three success if i were if i were him i would be happy at least two people did well but he focused on the one person as if all the rest failed that's how an unapologetic god is 
as far as on, on, on productivity and fruitfulness is concerned. Make up your mind from this night that I must live a fruitful and a meaningful life. Every trouble you are there, trouble to others you are there, but blessing and affecting people. Christmas is coming by next month where people are looking for gifts to bless all those who God used to bless them. They forget you. Even your neighbors don't remember you because there is nothing about your life counting. You watch people buy cows. They buy gifts and they are telling people thank you. Yet you are the neighbor and nobody can say thank you. I had you praying and it inspired me to pray. It was you that brought order to my life. Hi. In the name of Jesus, I pray again. Whatever is wasting your days, whatever is wasting your time, that you are just existing but not living, I'm praying that this night in this place, may you find a clear direction to purpose. Hallelujah. This one is hard, bar. Yes. In every menu, not every meal tastes the same. There are others that are hot and spicy. Am I right on that? There are others that are, okay, you can make do with it. What is available in a, minute, in a minute, miracle service like this? Angelic activities angelic activities i believe in the ministry of angels i hope that next year god will grant us grace and i will do a series on the ministry of angels the average believer does not even know why angels exist and to what end so people do all kinds of things some command them some shout some beg them some worship them and there's all kinds of confusion around the ministry of angels may god grant us grace to really know why they are here and next year i hope we'll be able to deal with the subject of angels are we together now but everywhere god is angels will usually come there as we learn in genesis chapter 28 jacob came to a place called Luz, and the bible says he lay on a stone to sleep and he saw a ladder that was ascending i mean a ladder that reached the heavens and at the top of it was God or the appearance of God himself speaking, I am this, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. And then he saw angels ascending and angels descending. When Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, the Bible lets us know that when he was done praying, after Satan came to tempt him and he became victorious, angels came and ministered to him. Everywhere you see the presence of God, you also find the ministry of angels. Why are they there? The Bible lets us know with clarity and precision that angels are there to bring to pass the word of God. They walk in partnership with the ministry of the Holy Spirit, causing his word to come to pass. Are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to them that be the heirs of salvation? Hallelujah. Are we together? The ministry of angels. If God is in that place, like he is in this place, you must find the ministry of angels. The Bible lets us know that there are many activities that happen in Mount Zion. But he has come to Mount Zion and he begins to list the things there. The spirits of just men made perfect. Are we together? And he says an innumerable company of angels. That means as many in the midst of the thousands, tens of thousands of people in this place tonight, there are angels that are more than the people. If, if a legion of demons can be in one man, how much more the angels of God? How many demons fell from heaven? It was only a third. Angels. That means there is one standing near you. And it's not standing to just hear what I'm saying. He's standing to hear what God is saying through me. That when God says it's time for you to arise, the angels stand. Have you seen what angels did? Two angels use hailstone and they killed people. You don't know what angels can do when the command comes from God. They are not there to do your bidding. I told you, they are there to do God's bidding. If it looks like they are obeying you, is they are not slaves to you. No. They, they, they are sent to minister, to bring to pass the speakings of God. 
it is when the saints carry the word of God and makes it their word, then it looks like they are obeying you. The Bible says in Acts chapter 12 that it pleased Herod. Herod decided to vex certain Jews and they caught James and beheaded James. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, they now caught Peter and they bound Peter expecting that after the feast of unleavened bread, they would bring him out to the people. Verse 5 says, the church became angry and they said, there is something we can do. We are not alone. We may not have access to the prison, but we know there is angelic ministry. And the Bible says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. How did God answer? Verse 6, the Bible now says, when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the Bible says the keepers before the door went to the prison. Verse 7. Behold, who did God send? The angel of the Lord came unto him and a light shined in prison. And it was that angel that brought him out. Please help me honor Reverend Sam Oye. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence tonight. Are we together? So what do we find here? The ministry of angels. What else is available in a miracle service like this? Impartation. A transference of graces. A transference of graces. Technology has been able to simulate impartation to a degree using a device called Bluetooth. Say Bluetooth. I don't know why it's tooth, but Bluetooth. That's what we're taught. Here is a world that believes everything you can't ask. Once you are not the inventor, you will take whatever you were given and swallow it like that. So I can bring my device near yours or within a reasonable distance. Isn't it amazing? And a whole information without our phones contacting themselves, there can be a transference. You can transfer music. You can transfer rubbish. You can transfer thoughts. That can, whatever it is, there is a possibility and it can live and it will not deplete the information that is in that device say impartation hmm. you don't transfer music and then yours disappears no except your phone is not good listen you need to believe this and i'm sure there are all kinds of advancements that are coming now always be conscious and let me tell you this impartation in a house like this is both vertical and horizontal it is not only the man of god the bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered including your sitting ordered by the lord you may not know that you've been crying and say lord i'm trusting for a grace this laziness and god will order your step to sit near someone that has a grace for diligence and while you are looking at apostle the grace is coming from here but it's also coming across you have to believe this impartation you believe what i'm saying impartation is not just a transference of graces from the man of god no there are people who Perhaps they would have traveled and not come for this service. But for your sake, in addition to what God is doing through Joshua Selman, he brings them and puts them. Remember the Bluetooth thing we're talking about? Just close to you. Because that guy, he gave God a kind of seed that made God to vow and say, I place the power to prosper on you. And you have been crying, oh God, bring my family out of pain. You wanted to sit inside, but the person carrying that grace is in the overflow. And even though you came early, God still okay that you sat outside and while you are complaining saying i want apostle to see me the real person carrying the grace you have been fasting for is seated close to you if you don't believe what i just said you are not a christian you don't know god it is the reason why every man of god must know that you are just one of the vessels being used in a service like this not everybody will stand on stage but everybody is being used by god that means as a man of God, as I am preaching, if there are graces I need that are available and I'm just conscious of giving without receiving, I can live empty even though I came full to bless people. A spiritual banquet like this has the menu of the power of God to save 
the power of God to heal, the power of God to deliver, the power to bring light, illumination, an explanation to your predicaments alongside a scriptural way out. The power to restore guidance and direction, angelic activities, enforcing the speakings of the spirit. What is available in a spiritual banquet like this? Encounters. Both physical encounters and spiritual encounters. What is an encounter? A supernatural experience that brings you into the reality of a truth, the reality of a dimension. The goal of encounters is to create conviction. Some of you are Christians, but you don't really believe God yet. Can he do it? But something can happen to you. But I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. I know God lives, but ah, the kind of trouble and the kind of pit that I am in. And while the word is coming, it's a supernatural thing. I may not even be talking along that area. Suddenly the grace for you comes. And the reality of God in an area just becomes crystallized in your life. I can believe God. I can build this house. Even though all I have home and abroad is 100,000. As I was hearing the word, an example will come from the preacher that may not even be connected to the sermon for your sake. And something from that example will suddenly both your logic and your discernment will agree that God is able and immediately that happens your mind and your spirit has received that reality encounters both physical and spiritual those who encounter God become testaments of the dimensions of him they encounter when you encounter a healing Jesus your life will be a clear manifestation of a healing Jesus. When you encounter a prospering Jesus, your life becomes a clear manifestation of a prospering Jesus. When you encounter the Jesus that delivers, one of the ways that God brings men into ministry is to choose the area he has called them to serve and give them unique encounters in that area so that their convictions become strongest. Luke will say in Luke chapter 1, the things that are most surely believed the things that are most surely believed you don't believe everything at the same level on a on on a scale of one to ten there are some of you who believe prosperity more than you believe healing there are some of you who believe deliverance more than you believe all of these things and god's assignment in an atmosphere like this is to upgrade your conviction through encounters so that it will match the threshold that can deliver the results expected if he has called you for instance to take his ability to prosper and favor men and your believing god in the area of favor and prosperity is two on a scale of one to ten nobody will place demand on the grace of god on your life because that is almost zero in the spirit. You can't get any result like that. And so an encounter will come. And that encounter lifts your faith level in that area. To a level where you can be blessed. And through your life you can bring many into that experience. If we are together say amen. amen. Now listen carefully. What are the major channels by which God visits his people? I need to say this. There are major channels what are the major channels every time god is bringing a visitation to his people it's important for you to know that there is a modus operandi in the spirit god is a god of patterns and god is a god of order are we together if it is a god of the bible visiting his people like zephaniah says there is a way that he comes through number one what are the channels every time god is visiting his people the first way he visits people is through his wisdom his wisdom as the word is taught like you are hearing now there is a visitation of god's wisdom christ appears unto you as the wisdom of god his wisdom as the word is taught his wisdom is revealed number two god visits people by making available his power wisdom constructs your understanding it guides your decision you see 
the excellency of wisdom is seen in the quality of decisions that you take if your decisions are frail if your decisions are weak if your decisions do not produce superior results it is because you are bankrupt of the wisdom of god the excellency of wisdom is seen in the quality and the superiority of decisions that are taken and the results that follow so number two his power when god brings solutions they are beyond scientific even though they can be scientific they are beyond philosophical even though they can be philosophical god's primary way of bringing solutions to people is through the supernatural his power so it is possible that you came with an infirmity and minutes after now that infirmity leaves you see medicine will be able to confirm that is gone that devil is gone and gone forever you see that now yes but that the technology by which that result came even though can be explained by science is through the power of god and there are mysteries ladies and gentlemen when it has to do with the business of the power of god there is a portion of it that is given to the saints to understand but there are certain aspects of god's power the bible says there is no searching of his understanding there is a level as far as the administration of god's power is concerned the bible says just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child there is an aspect science can explain logic can explain philosophy can explain intellect can explain but there is a dimension beyond which the only thing you say is to god be the glory this one is only god that knows how he did it like the testimony that you'll be talking about after this service there 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 is listen there is an aspect of it that you will tell people one plus one i know how it became two i know how it became four from there i can't explain all i know is that there was an answer equal to whatever god said listen science teaches us that one plus one is two but you see one plus one plus god equals to the answer he puts there it can be three it can be ten it can be one million the moment you bring god into an occasion he is in control of the answer that he puts there are we together god's equation for you a tenant plus bankruptcy can equal a landlord an equation that does not make sense every time results don't make sense there is a factor there you are not seeing the moment god is introduced he disrupts logic it goes beyond the realm of reasoning so don't start calculating it you may not see wind tonight you may not see rain but don't ask how the valley is filled with water this is god for you if i were asked to lead the nation of israel out of egypt i probably would gather certain engineers and say what do we do now let's be able to measure the depth of the water because the first assignment will be to successfully part the sea the second assignment is to find a way of looking for sand to build that gap now that depth that has been created but not when it's god everything can happen overnight like you are seated here now and god is waking someone somewhere in the name of jesus christ i'm not motivating you i'm prophesying to you that you are seated here and the god that i serve waking someone and bringing to remembrance putting you in the hearts of men it is true hmm. is someone learning what is the third channel as far as experiencing his visitation encounters like i said earlier on he comes revealing his wisdom he comes revealing his power he brings you encounters do you know ladies and gentlemen that you can be seated here while you are looking at me the spirit of grace will come and pick you to a dimension like he took ezekiel and you will no longer be in this service and you are somewhere with the king of glory and he's showing you things showing you things
bringing direction all of a sudden everybody disappears in this room and it is only you an audience of one and his majesty speaking to you bringing perspective to your life showing you what has been happening in your family that this thing happened you don't need to be a prophet blessed is the man that God causes to approach him the moment he opens the vistas of encounter with them will come explanations solutions and conviction do you believe this what is the fourth channel by which God visits his people the prophetic ah, the prophetic the prophetic is a potent channel every time men cried unto God he came down using the prophetic I have heard the cry of my people Exodus chapter 3 by reason of their past masters he says and I am come down we never saw him physically but we saw a mysterious Tamara called Moses who encountered the God of the Bible and he led literally single-handedly went to Egypt the center of wizardry and brought over two point something million people out with only a rod and no assistance whatsoever the prophetic is powerful when men are in trouble every time men got into trouble whether self-inflicted or caused by darkness god will send a prophet a prophet here does not mean a prophetic office there are three levels to the prophetic there is the office of a prophet manifesting the prophetic are we together there is the gift of prophecy but there is the operation of the prophetic the operation of the prophet is not limited to individuals inclined to the prophetic maturity brings every believer to a state where you can operate in the prophetic are we together yeah this is very important so god comes to us like he's coming to us tonight by his wisdom by his power i'm saying that so that you will expect the miracle service is already going on there are people the moment they only believe they are in church when someone is shouting and falling and rolling they say finally service has started whereas god came since visiting people bringing comprehension of truth now this is the zenith of my discussion before we begin to pray and please i want you to lend me your attention may i request you pray in the spirit for one minute so that you open up your channels for reception further go ahead and pray in the name of jesus hallelujah a quick recap we explain that a miracle service is a moment where God decides, according to Zephaniah 3.17, to come in the midst of his people and to bring a visitation. Hallelujah. Mightily revealing his power, revealing his glory in the midst of his people. And I did tell us the things that are available in a miracle service like this. That every service like this, according to Jesus, is likened to a feast and a supper. And that in that supper, there are all kinds of people. They brought the lame, they brought the sick, they brought the maimed, and he said, there is still space for more. And he said, now I will not give conditions. Anybody who is available, join the list of the more. The feast, there is still room for it for you. And I began to list for you that the, there are certain things available in a feast like this power to save power to heal in fact all that is captured in psalm 103 from verse 1 to 5 they are called his benefits five of them bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name verse 2 says bless the lord O my soul and forget not his benefits the focus is on the lord but also remember that he comes with benefits number one who forgiveth all thine iniquity not some Two, who healed all thy diseases, not some. Three, who redeemed thy life from destruction, deliverance. And number four, honor, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Five, prosperity, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. His benefits. Now, why do many believers come into an atmosphere like this? And yet they do not receive please I want you to pay attention 
I've studied for many years by the privilege of God's grace. The supernatural and this spirit activity of God visiting his people. And why in the midst of such mighty presence of God, others receive and others do not. And I've been able to put together by the spirit of God four major reasons. There are many. But in order of priority, I have found out from my life, from the experience of scripture, from the life of mighty people who have commanded visitations across territories and nations, that there are four major reasons why although God shows up in the midst of his people, his people may not receive. John chapter 1 from verse 11, John puts it beautifully. He says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. It is possible that God comes. The he there can be any expression of God. His wisdom came to his own. His power came to his own. His favor came to his own. Are we together? His lifting came to his own. Jesus the way came to his own. Jesus the truth came to his own. Jesus the life came to his own. The deliverer came to his own. But they received him not. Then the next verse says, but as many as received him. Unfortunately, as many. Doesn't leave a number. But it tells you there are chances that there are people who will still not receive. Even though he came. One thing is a fact from this scripture. He came. He came. His power came. His healing came. Our precious people led us through that song. That the God of signs and wonders, the Savior, the Redeemer, that he would come and make manifest his presence. He's heard it like he heard Jabez. But whether or not you will receive tonight will be dependent on these reasons. Are you ready? Number one. The first reason why many do not receive in an atmosphere like this is lack of expectation lack of expectation there is no dis definition of their desired expectation this is very important luke 18 let's hurry up luke 18 from verse 40 to 43 lack of expectation believers just stroll into his presence carelessly hoping that at least i'm here whatever god wants to do with me and while that is sincere that is not enough there must be a definition to your desired expectation talking about blind Bartimaeus, jesus is passing through the jericho now that would be his last time passing that street and jesus stood and commanded him the him being blind Bartimaeus, to be brought to him and when he was come near he asked him 41 saying what will thou that I shall do unto you. Look up please. This would sound silly. Almost irresponsible and sarcastic of Jesus. You would think that because a man were blind. And he was shouting have mercy on me. He did not define what he wanted. Have mercy on me means let me get your sympathy. It doesn't mean that he has defined his expectation. Jesus taught us a profound lesson here. He comes to the man. You ask for my sympathy. I am here available to do all i'm ready to give you a visitation what do you want and the man now zoomed down he said that i may receive my sight i've taught you here remember our, our teaching on the scene i he never said that i may see because his eyes were open it's just that he was not seeing the problem was not lack of eyes the problem was not even lack of the movement of eyes is that he did not have sight your eyes can be open, yet you are not seeing. Jesus never said, see. Look at how Jesus answers. Jesus said unto him, you ask to receive your sight. I won't give you something else. I will give you consistent with your expectation. Verbatim, receive thy sight. The man at gate beautiful. When he came, he was a man who was lame. But his expectation was to receive arms. Probably he had children, who knows? He had relatives, who knows? Or he wanted to take care of his immediate need. And he saw this gentleman, Peter and John, going to pray at the hour of prayer. And he stops them. And, you know, hoping that he would get something. They said, look on us. And the Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive. But the Bible tells us that it, something, what is something? Expecting to receive something. Consistent with his arms. 
And Peter said, no, if I leave this man this way, silver and gold, let me just tell you straight. I'm sorry to disappoint your expectation. So Peter defines the something. He says, I know what you are looking for. Silver and gold. Sorry, we do not have it. However, we will not leave you in this state. There is something we have. And even though it is not yet your expectation, it is really what you need. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the real something you need is the ability to rise up and walk. This is a prophetic message. There is someone who is looking for silver and gold right now. But you are coming to people and they are telling you, no, we will not give you. And you are offended because what you really need is the ability to rise up and walk. Arise, shine, your light has come. Rise up and walk. This is not just to a man who is physically lame. Your ability to rise up. If you cannot rise up, you cannot walk. It takes courage to rise up. It takes discernment to rise up. It takes a revelation of who you are in Christ to rise up. There are many of you who have been sitting around the corridors of destiny, begging for arms, and God keeps sending people who you get disappointed by because the something you are expecting is silver and gold. And they are coming like I'm coming tonight. That beyond silver and gold, in my case, you will get both silver and gold in the name of Jesus. But beyond it beyond it there is an ability that is greater than silver and gold in the economy of heaven the ability to rise up and walk is greater than silver and gold you can receive silver and gold but if you one of the major characteristic of living things is movement and motion and silver and gold does not have the power on its own to create motion the value of silver and gold is that you can rise up and walk and use it. You came here asking for something. You are fastening your eyes on me, expecting to receive. For others, you are just praying and saying, Lord, something that meets my immediate need. And the apostle is saying, no, God is too mindful. He's mindful of your today, your tomorrow and next. Unfortunately, I do not have that which will meet your immediate need. But there is something I can give you, an ability. And that comes in the name of Jesus. Not stored in a bank, not stored in a marketplace. You don't find it in a mall. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of Nazareth, he said, rise up and walk. Someone prophesy, say, rise up. Rise. You are speaking to yourself, say, rise up, rise up. and walk. walk. Rise up and walk means rise up and excel. Rise up and walk means shake yourself from the limitations of yesterday and be able to stand up and start making constructive progress. Rise up and walk means rejoice not over me, my enemies. Though I fall, yet I will rise again. The Bible says the righteous fall at seven times. Listen to me, let me tell you, the ability to rise up and walk is proof of courage, audacity. Rise up after a loss. Rise up after pain. Rise up after limitations. Rise up and walk. Such as I have. Men can have the ability to make others rise up and walk. This is powerful. Men can have the ability in the name of Jesus to cause nations to rise up and walk. Ministries to rise up and walk. Businesses to rise up and walk. That everywhere you see lameness, don't just think silver and gold. Remember there is an ability within your spirit and you can speak to systems, to structures, to men, to families, to destinies. Let me prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus, the one who gave gifts to men. I speak to you where you have been at a beautiful gate with an ugly situation tonight rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and walk rise up and excel rise up and walk in the name of jesus christ please be seated lack of expectation you must define your desire tonight don't come in carelessly and say, Lord, as you are touching others, touch me. What does touch me mean? Because what touch me means in the mind of God is not what he means. And because he's not the one who has the need. He gives you the liberty. Mark eleven twenty four. And what things soever ye desire, name them, give them a frame. When you pray, you see that? That means one of the laws of prayer is creativity and imagination. Vision must be part of what guides your effective prayer. 
if there is no vision, your prayer will be amiss. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them. What is the them? The them that is already defined. The them already defined. Every time people came to Jesus with a clear definition of their expectation, whether it was a centurion son or to, that their eyes be open or to rise up from, you know, their state of lameness with palsy, Jesus responded immediately. That is the reason why we guide people by allowing you to come with prayer requests. You see that now? Prayer request is God's way of helping to coordinate your expectation, to give it definition, to give it form, to help to guide you. So that when you write five, six things, you're writing it using your mind, you're writing it, and, and listen, there is intelligence. The Bible says watch and pray. The word watch there does not just mean be vigilant. It means let your mind be an active part of that process. Hallelujah. Lack of expectation. So whilst you are seated here right now, it does not take long for the power of God to visit people. But make sure you frame your expectation. And for those who are following across the globe, doesn't matter what nation, what region, you can begin to pen down your expectations. Not just to send them to us, but so that you will be a witness. That you will take them one by one. The Bible says, oh, taste and see. I told you it's a banquet. You can taste the goodness of God. Not just believe and expect. You can taste. There is a frame to it. Your life can be a witness that God is good. Number one, let's hurry up. Why do many fail to receive, even in the midst of such an atmosphere, lack of expectation? Can I give you number two? Lack of sensitivity. Lack of sensitivity. Their word comes. Only God knows how many people's words has come. For someone that rise up and walk, I said, that is your miracle service word. That's it. You've been like a lame man sitting at gate, beautiful. And God is speaking to you tonight, rise up. Rise up takes courage. Rise up takes light. Rise up takes the fortitude to stand alone. Rise up takes the grace, the ability to be controversial until your life proves otherwise. Rise up and walk. Lack of sensitivity. Their word comes but they are not sensitive and they are distracted in luke chapter 19 and verse 44 we we'll just jump to 44 for the sake of time but the context starts from 40. jesus wept over jerusalem and said oh jerusalem jerusalem it says if only thou had known even in this thy day the things that pertain unto your peace it says but they are hid from your eyes and then he makes a very interesting statement go to 44 please it says and shall lay ye even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another for the simple reason all of the calamities that were explained in 43 and the early part of 44 will come simply because thou knowest not the time of your visitation the time thou shall arise he says and have mercy upon zion he says because the time to favor her yea the set time the word set time there is the word kairos the opportune time the time that has coincided with god's predeterminate counsel can I tell you, there are seasons in life and destiny where the waters of destiny is steered. And the Bible says, whoever was the first, it was about sensitivity. There were no sentiments to it. Nobody's name was put that this year you will be the one to walk. There were many people around Bethesda, the lame, the halt, all kinds of people. The Bible says they were waiting for the steering of the water. Two information the Bible does not give. The exact day the angel comes does not tell us. It just know that it's coming and be prepared. Take sensitivity. There were many people who had the potential to receive Elijah's mantle. Even those who were under his training, they were students without sensitivity. But this man said, I discern that you are going. And he said, if you can see me, it takes sensitivity, ladies and gentlemen, to receive from God. Are you ready for number three? We have to rush. Can you imagine that all I'm giving you is a charge? Number three, are you ready? What is the third reason 
why many people do not receive from God. I call it manifesting conditional faith. Write it and I'll explain to you. Manifesting conditional faith. You can put condition in um, what they call that thing. Huh? Bracket or whatever English people. Manifesting conditional faith in quotes. What does that mean? God has to move in a certain way for you to believe he has moved. Conditional faith. 2 Kings 5 verse 9. There are many people whose faith is tied to a certain way. If God does not move this way, I can't believe he's the one moving. Watch this. This is the story of Naaman in the house of Elisha. So Naaman came with his horses. Remember? The king now beckoned on him. Elijah, Elisha now said, okay, come to me. And the Bible says, so Naaman came with his horses, follow carefully, and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger, listen, and said, tell Naaman, go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again unto thee, and thou shalt be clean. As a result... The Bible says Naaman was wroth. He was angry and went away. Why? He said, behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of his God and strike his hand over the place to recover me. Verse 12. Are not Abana and Papa rivers in Damascus better than all of this? May I not go and wash in them? The Bible says he turned and went in a rage. Because when he came to the man of God, he expected, number one, that you come, ah, you are the nah man, you are the great man. All right, let me tell you what to do. Turn around, do this, do that. You are a noble man. You can't go and wash in a dirty river Jordan. There are clean ones that match your status. It's amazing how people come to God. There is a difference between having expectation and commanding God to behave in a way that suits your lust. Are we together now? Yes. Your expectation is the end result. The method is exclusively God's prerogative. You are not given the liberty to choose how God visits you. You are only given the liberty to set the vision that this is the expected picture. The moment you put God in a mold and say you must use this formula. For instance, there are people who if they never fall down, even if all the anointing in the world rests on their head, they, believe, they live disappointed. You see them as if they are returning from a funeral. God, I was here. I even sat in front. Whereas something mighty has landed upon their head. Are we together? God taught me many years ago. Yours is to believe me. Allow me to choose the method. There are many factors that guide God's choosing the method. Number one is your faith level. Number two, the human vessels available to partner with prophecy. They, they can alter the way God acts. For instance, if God's desire is that by tomorrow, if I prophesy to you that by this time tomorrow, someone will give you a job. Watch this. I've taught you how prophecy works. The spirit of wisdom goes around looking for the human vessel that will come into partnership with that word. I can choose as an act of my volition. Are we together now? To refuse to partner with God. God will have, that is the reason why the spirit of wisdom is there. He will keep using different strategies. The most important thing is that his word will not return to him void. Mary had a right to reject. She would have said, listen, I don't want any trouble. I'm preparing for my wedding. Don't bring trouble. You are a wicked angel. You waited until I'm planning for wedding. You now appear and you want to disrupt my life. Carry your trouble and get out of this house. He would have respected her and he would have left. The mother of Jesus would have been called something else. But for sure, that, that incarnation would have happened. Are we together? This is very powerful. Tonight, don't give God any conditions who have to move through a formula. Lord, the most important thing is that causes and yokes must get out of my family. How that will happen this night... Lord, I do not know. If it means shouting, I will shout. If it means lifting my hands, I will lift. Sometimes, Peter did not even know when Satan entered him. He was just smiling. And Jesus said, do you know that Satan has finished his business with you? 
I had to pray for you. And yet he never saw Jesus praying. And Jesus said, I was praying all the while. Lord, no matter how you want to move in my life and my family, go ahead. The most important thing is that this yoke must be lifted. The most important thing is that doors will come. There are many of us, the moment we say, may God lift you, an uncle comes to your mind. You have forced God to bring that breakthrough through that uncle. And there are some of you harassing every wealthy person because you have this, this, this poor understanding. The moment they say receive in your mind, maybe even in your prayer request. Now, number one was his name. The name and the name of his wife. Father, this night they will not sleep. No, that's not how a believer works. Listen, you will keep disappointing yourself again and again. There are 8 billion people on earth. Not everybody will tell God no. There are people who are yielded, including Cyrus's. And if they decide to refuse, as the owner of his property called man, he's called the father of spirits. He can manipulate any spirit, including that of Pharaoh, to give you gold. Pharaoh that will not give them straw, now suddenly gives them gold. To tell you that he did not do it by his mind. He was under an influence. When they left, he said, what have I done? I carried the entire treasure of Egypt. Chase them and receive it back. God for you. You would have been blessed since. If you said, God, by your wisdom, my ways are not your ways. Is that not what he told you? You have been forcing God, walk through my ways. Lord, it is civil defense. It is oil and gas. Because with my little mind, I know that is the only way I can eat and give some of my relatives the remaining. And God says, listen, it is be I can connect you to men. Don't force God and say, you must give me a job in NMPC. You must give me a job with Shell. You must give me a job. I must work with UN. Hallelujah. And sometimes you will not get certain blessings because you do not have the spiritual stamina to stand the attacks that come with the blessing you are asking God to give you. Every realm of reality has, it has a spiritual stamina, a requirement of stamina to be ushered into that realm. Hallelujah. By the time you get to a place that is the center of wizardry, that everybody in that place is in some cult or somewhere, and now you are a passive, careless Christian, prayer almost zero, what study almost zero, and you are saying, God, bring me in the midst of those occultists. In fact, let me be a PA to the director. God says, I love you too much. I love you too much. It's compassion, not an attack. Because God will look at you and look at your mother praying and say, no, I can't do this to this woman. Are we learning? Number four. Huh. The fourth reason. Why many believers do not receive. Are you ready? Refusal to acknowledge and glorify God through thanksgiving and testimonies. The reason why many believers do not receive or do not sustain what they receive is the refusal to acknowledge God and to glorify Him through thanksgiving and testimonies. Psalm 22, 22. Psalm 22, 22. I will declare thy name unto my brethren, it says. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Not just in my room. In the midst of the congregation, I will announce to them. You see, let me tell you this. Sometimes, when we have the liberty of time, and people are healed or people are delivered and we ask people to come forward to testify it achieves many reasons attesting to the fact that the man of god is anointed is the least of the reasons you need to know that it is a spiritual system the bible says 10 people jesus gave an instruction to 10 lepers is that in your bible and he was on his way passing and yet he remained there he stood there and the bible says only one came to give thanks when they saw that they were healed, only one came and Jesus said, he didn't even say, oh, thank you, you have done well. He said, were there not ten of you? Where are the remaining nine? And the Bible says only one was made whole, even though the rest were healed. Are we together? It is beyond a man of God. There are certain levels of lifting when God has lifted you. Proving certain points of anointing and power is unnecessary again. 
are we together now with all due respect and with all humility trying to prove whether god is in this house or whether we are not is childishness god has already stamped a signature that can never be erased are we together now so when you ask people to come when you ask people to testify you are it's not just proving that the man of god is anointed number one you are letting the nation see like we always sing that jesus is the same yesterday today there is a non-believer depending on that performance that miracle and then number two it helps to concretize it in the life of the recipient that god is truly at work and finally seals that miracle have this at the back of your mind there are many of you today what was glory was turned to shame because when god did it or when it started you felt that i cannot testify no i'm too big truly the pain has left my god this thing he said so the pain has gone i, I can't feel the growth again or this one i can now move my neck but can i come out it's too far i'm seated at the back at the overflow or i'm seated at the basement or anywhere and whilst you are doing all of that god is watching you and then you give room because every time spirits leave men they intend to return is it not in your bible they intend to return one way we come into fullness is through thanksgiving the fullness of anything is achieved through gratitude and thanksgiving anything god gives you and it is not yet in his fullness you can complete that equation and move his hand let the people praise thee and he says the earth shall yield his increase and god even our god will bless us god you gave me tea where is the bread and god says what are you talking about it is tea and bread you promised me and god will say that bread is still far from you because you cannot say thank you for tea someone the tea is not there just because the ingredients are there you begin to dance and roll and say that the ingredients are there means that i can make the tea and while he's saying that god says i will not only give you tea and bread i will give you a factory that now makes it so you can bless others believe what i'm telling you your rent has not come but how about the fifty thousand someone gave you it's too small now can i tell god thank you because of fifty thousand and god says fifty thousand whereas that's somebody's prayer request number one self all right so if you cannot if you are too big to give me thanks because you think it is too small then you rather remain at that level is the reason why we thank god for any and every miracle in this place you see one major problem with ministries that experience the supernatural is that they get so too used to so, what we call notable miracles and once a miracle is not outstanding like rising from the wheelchair throwing a crutch a blind eye visibly blind opening and something once you hear someone say oh i can now move you just clap carelessly like i just have to do it so that god will not can the bible says which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his hair anything that god does is deserving of my gratitude there are times i go to minister and almost all the testimonies are maybe just corrective things nothing necessarily notable i celebrate god in that meeting as if it was dead people that came back to life are we together yeah i'm expecting a job tomorrow oh the job did not come but an old friend called me we had a meaningful discussion that planted hope in my mind father thank you because even though this that i expect is not here i am grateful because i already see your hand moving someone shout thank you jesus let the devil hear you say thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you thank you for doing the things that only you can do only you can do only you can do do not peg yourself to only celebrate god for spectacular things everything god does in my life is deserving of my communicating gratitude no matter how little and when you learn that with god no matter how great you are you can translate that to people no matter how big a man you are someone can come and transfer a recharge card of 100 naira and it looks laughable but you will say thank you you will take the time to send text messages and say may god bless you because that hundred thousand will come with a gratitude that is worth one million are we together 
is the reason why certain people start i'm digressing for a moment just to press a point there are people today do you know that generally speaking if someone keeps giving you hundred hundred thousand every day a time will come you'll get so used to the hundred thousand and then your expectation will rise and you now say i have two children oh this man started giving me hundred thousand three years ago when i did not have a child now i have two children is he aware of what is happening in nigeria and one day you the courage will be rising gradually until you build momentum to say it one day thank you but by now that one million should have gotten that a uh, hundred thousand should have gotten to one million and both god and the man will agree that you deserve to remain there say thank you jesus one more time say thank you jesus again for someone this is your own revelation go back and find the top five people that have shown you kindness consistently and tell them i came for miracle service and i learned the power of gratitude i have taught you here i will keep teaching you send them a text not the type you will send then two minutes later you are begging don't beg just send a text you know believers have funny ways calvary greetings in the blessed name of our lord and savior the resurrected king and savior amen just to keep in touch just, and and network will not even allow that one get there and then the real request comes i'm reminding you again that rent has increased and uh, it's like i've not heard from you is it that you don't care about me again and it suddenly makes the prior gratitude look fake there are times for no reason tell people thank you thank you are you learning church for you church i told you is the cheapest institution that sponsors transformation the cheapest institution on earth that sponsors transformation is the church every other institution has age range quotas if they take 10 people out of south south 10 people from northeast that's it sorry for you age range gender prejudices but for the church all that is required is your availability and the meekness to receive hallelujah refusal to acknowledge god can i give you one more let me make it five huh the fifth reason very quickly why many do not receive is dishonor to prophetic instructions this is a very major one dishonor to prophetic instructions through disobedience of familiarity dishonor to prophetic instructions the fifth reason why people do not receive from god even in an atmosphere like this dishonor to prophetic instructions through disobedience of familiarity john chapter 2 we'll read 5 then we'll jump to 10 and 11. dishonor to prophetic instructions through disobedience of familiarity this is the wedding in cana of galilee and wine had finished mary the mother of jesus leads some of the people the disciples to jesus and then she gives them a very good charge his mother said unto the servants whatsoever he saith unto you do it don't want to do it do it and they now did it verse 10 what happened and came to the rulers after the water had turned to wine the ruler said every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now and then the bible says this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him at the strength of obedience to prophetic instructions can i give you one more scripture matthew 13 please from verse 54 we're reading to 58 matthew 13 54 to 58 and when he was coming to his own country watch this now he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said whence had this man this wisdom and this mighty works uh-huh 55 is this not the carpenter's son you see their foolish analysis is not his mother called mary and his brethren james joseph and simon and judas and his sisters are they not all with us 
We know this person. Whence then had this man all these things? As a result, the Bible says they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not supposed to be without honor, except in his own country. That means every true prophet in any area, there is honor that is connected to priesthood. There is honor that is connected to results. But he says that you stand a chance to be despised in your own place. And the Bible says as a result, he did not many miracle, many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Jesus for you, almighty Jesus, healing Jesus. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamarika. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamarika. can i tell you to receive let me end this now there are three keys i want to hand to you then we begin to pray in order to receive of this feast of the spirit this feast of fat things let's go to isaiah 44 24 to 27 there are three keys that are locked in that scripture that becomes for us the guiding light into our receiving the miraculous from God. For saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things. Did you see that? Very profound scripture. Not just the Lord that revealeth, not just the Lord that give it i am the lord that maketh all things that stretch forth the heavens alone and spread abroad the earth by myself next verse please that frustrated the tokens of liars and maketh diviners mad and turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish I like this, that confirmed the words of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers. I say to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built and I will raise up the decayed places thereof. I say it to the deep, be dry and I will dry up the rivers. The Bible says, watch this, you must believe in God himself. The one who makes, the one who gives, the one who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So to receive, what are the keys? Number one, you must believe in God. You must also believe in his love and his power towards you. You must believe in God. You must believe in God. John 17, 3. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee the only true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. You must believe in God, 
you must believe in his love i have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness i have drawn you i have taught you here that every supernatural manifestation from god and by god to his people is a letter coming from heaven to you and there are two basic things that are written in that letter number one i love you for every miracle you receive from jesus do not just receive the package read the letter that is there every true manifestation of the power of god to the life of the saints comes with a letter from the throne room one is the letter of love number two he reminds you that he is still el shaddai all powerful tonight as you receive diverse miracles from god i beseech you by the message of god do not just celebrate the package without reading the letter my king and my savior is writing letters to people for someone the letter he's writing to you is what i told you before still stands and i have proven it right now to some he's writing to you that though your beginning be small let your letter end shall greatly increase for some he's writing to you that i am still a faithful god and i'm still deserving of your trust you must sustain the intelligence to read the letter that comes from heaven don't just celebrate the healing the breakthrough the prophetic word don't just fall down and stand up and clean yourself only to go back without receiving the letter every one of the many people here gathered tonight and the many more following online i tell you there is a letter from his majesty even our earthly system of delivering letters is so effective you can literally write letter to someone in the north pole the ends of the earth and guarantee that it will arrive and thanks to the internet now with one click one click literally they receive the mail the text or whatever device you are using how much more god there is a letter when he presses send there is no network problem it gets to you for sure i can send a letter to one person i can send a text to one person and of the thousands of people in this place that one person will receive not 10 people not five people under normal circumstances don't say he's writing to us there is a unique letter his majesty is writing bespoke to the challenges that you've gone through for someone if he says i love you it may not make sense to him you were born in comfort all your family members love god you've gone through minimal witchcraft attacks because sacrifices were made before your arrival but to someone that letter i love you from heaven will be the healing balm he comes to someone as a great physician not just to heal you physically but to heal certain deep wounds that have been locked up within your spirit. Wounds that were created from your background and your upbringing that have destroyed you today. The letter of love must be read. I have loved you with an everlasting love. And with my loving kindness, I have drawn you. You have heard the love language from many fake people. Many people who were not serious, they did not even mean it. They were playing games yet you believe them why don't you listen to the one who is the epitome of love the bible says god is love he does not just show love he does not just have love it is the it is the ultimate the summation of his nature in one word is love god is love god is love and it is in the character of love to give this is why you can believe that he will freely give do you believe that so make sure you read the letter that comes that i love you for others you are reading the letter believe me i am still worthy of your trust you've lost the job you got a job in march lost it in may got into trouble july entered prison august came out september and you are saying i'm tired of this thing i'm about to leave god and he says hey here is a letter from heaven for your light affliction which is but for a moment walk it in you a far more exceeding weight of glory while you look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change but the things that are unseen are eternal hallelujah a letter for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time for someone is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you you heard the touching testimony of the gentleman once upon a time he pushed wheelbarrow but now has been exalted that may be a letter for someone i am still the lifter of men i don't just lift in lagos alone 
I don't just lift in America alone. I lift anywhere I am believed, even if it's inside a pit. You can enter a dry pit like Joseph, and the lifter does not just bring you from the pit to land. He takes you from the pit to the throne. God for you. The prison to the throne. He took Jesus from Hades until he sat at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. You've tempted me. Let me sing it. I will hold on through the storm. And I will hold on to your word. My life will soon refill. You're the lifter of man. The lifter of man. Who is this for? That I will hold on through the storm. Does God lift? Use the life of this man as a case study. Does God lift? Ask Joshua Selman. Does God lift? Ask Reverend Sam. Does God lift? Ask Koinonia. Does God lift? Ask Joseph. Does God lift? Ask Daniel. Does God lift? Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Does God lift? Yes, sir. Yes, he does. From where? Anywhere. To where? Anywhere. Did you hear what I said? He lived, but from where? Anywhere. To where? Say it, from where? Come on now. That anywhere can be anywhere indeed. From anywhere to anywhere. Anywhere can mean Saul to Paul. Anywhere can mean Rahab the prostitute to Rahab the champion. Anywhere can mean root the despised to root the wife of Boaz. Anywhere to anywhere. Let me prophesy to someone, the lifter of man from anywhere to anywhere. May he lift you in the name of Jesus. You must believe in God's love. Number two, you must believe in his servant. You must believe in his servant. It's not enough to believe in God. You must believe in his servant. If you believe in God and you despise his servant, you will not receive anything. The law is that you must believe in God and you must believe in the vessel he has sent to you. Listen, not the vessel available, the vessel sent. Just because a man is anointed does not mean he's sent to you. There are people I've met that I prayed for and I just sense in my heart, this is just general prayer. There, there was nothing that was drawn. There were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. That means Elijah passed certain widows and greeted them. How are you, madam? Fine. And he left. But when he went to the one, he was sent. Are we together? You must believe in the vessel sent. Number three and the final key. Then we begin to pray. You must receive by faith. The Bible says there remaineth a rest for the people of God. There remaineth a rest. What is the condition for that rest? The Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts like they did in the wilderness. It says they heard the word just like we did, but they did not mix. The word did not profit them. The word was available with potential to profit them, but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, I have taught you that faith in one word 
is obedience no matter what definition you bring to faith if it does not translate to your obeying god and obeying prophetic instructions then a miracle is far from you if it be thou bid me come and he said come he never said peter come he left it to whoever believed him unfortunately the one who acts is the one who truly believed not the one who motivates he said come any one of them would have jumped into that river that sea and still walk every time god leaves a blessing without attaching a name it is because it's for all bid me come come where to the next level come where to a higher dimension of reality he says come and peter jumped up and began to walk on water while the rest were cheering you can do it you can do it is not fate when he began to to sing they say we told you and god said no this is not how i work with men if they make mistakes trusting me i would defend my name in their life he held him and said why did you doubt but he stopped him from sinking hallelujah why are you here tonight to partake of that feast of the spirit delicacies prepared by the hand of god himself the bible lets us know that among the many things he's called is the good shepherd and the bible says that shepherds true shepherds watch their flock even if it's by night night is an uncomfortable time it says while shepherd watch their flocks by night there are shepherds that only watch their flocks by day when things are good but this good shepherd he watches over his flock even by night and in what way there are three ways shepherds watch their flock one they feed them two they make sure that they get to green pastures number one number two they guide them because a sheep does not have any system of defense on its own its only defense is its ability to stay and trust the leadership of the shepherd are we together now yes what is the third assignment of the shepherd he insists that they grow and multiply this is what jacob did to the sheep of laban he insisted that under his watch as a shepherd multiplication started so the good shepherd is here and all of this multiplication and the rest depend on the quality of what you eat he's giving you the buffet today he's giving you the menu my job is to be a faithful waiter I'm wearing whatever color this is, but I'm a waiter in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I have dropped it on your table. The goodness of God, the benefits of God. It's up to you now to select. If I were you, I would taste everything. No, this kind, it would be foolish to just make this. You know, there are people who want to show that they are very advanced. So when they get to a table, they are hungry. They are coming from a place. Maybe they are even breaking their fast. And they just take just a slice of orange. If you are doing it to preserve, that's fine. But where the atmosphere is set like this. No. There's rice. There's swallow. There's soup. There's everything. Then you just take a slice of orange. Take water and lie that you are alright. Don't make that kind of mistake here. There are others who don't mind. They first wash their hand and say shift all these your western things. They take one wrap, take another one. Then you think that they feel embarrassed, but they still take the third one. Are we together? They put one soup, they add draw, they add vegetables, they add whatever, they add stew. Then the protein, my goodness, every piece will be represented there. Then they now sit down. You invited them. There's water, wine, juice both destructive and organic they join everything together you are permitted to take that much tonight and you are also permitted listen listen beyond the plate that you eat in if you check well you will see that there is an extra vessel to take some more and to take it for those who deserve to receive that is how lavish this faithful shepherd is he's prepared for us a feast and in the name of jesus with the few minutes that we have i pray that as we stretch in prayer trusting him to bring deliverance trusting him to bring healing that at the end of this service nobody will walk empty in the name of jesus christ
Hallelujah. You have fought for food at physical weddings that carry no power. You fought and insisted you must carry the cabbage, the rice, the chicken. I have children at home. You ate, ate again, sat down, changed your table to eat the next one and carry to go. I'm just joking with you. Amen. But here you don't need to change your table. It will keep going around. If you miss it, it comes again. If you miss it, it comes again. Those outside, if you miss it, it comes again. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up on your feet. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nation see Jesus lifted up, exalted. begin to pray in the spirit thanking God for the word tonight and declaring that you are receiver someone pray someone pray someone pray all the overflows pray our family connecting online connecting by way of television go ahead and pray Salibarasco prende che bella casca te bas e bracata pecata bella cato sotto pregate bas Take a minute and invest in the spirit Be a sower tonight sowing into the spirit Sebele che parato sia da ba e fist of fat things a fist of the spirit an expression of the love and the power of God in the midst of his people we receive tonight we receive tonight we receive tonight we receive tonight come on someone pray from the depth of your heart we're in a season where God is taking men to new dimensions new season in ministry a new season in my life a new season in business season of plenty season of increase season of fire season of power in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray we have but a few minutes and we're going to be as fast as we can ladies and gentlemen let your heart be open he's called you and he never calls the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain I'm going to begin to minister by the Spirit and hopefully at the end of it I will invite God's servant Reverend Sam to just speak over our life since he's here I believe in the corporate anointing just to make prophetic declarations hallelujah today will be one day you will not forget in a hurry 
in the name of Jesus Christ. So, you sit back, fasten your seat belts, allow me to do my thing. You have believed, that's your own. So you just leave me and God to do the rest. Your own, you have believed, you've done your own. Hallelujah. Get out of our way. You just stand, be ready to receive and leave me and God together. Hallelujah. But one thing I assure you of is my God will surprise you. Every word that comes, remember you have been taught. Don't be careless. Receive it with your heart. Hallelujah. And I'm going to start by ministering deliverance of people. And the moment I'm done, we'll pray for the sick and we'll hopefully take testimony. I'm seeing my footballer people. Don't worry, my friend. You put down your boots there. I'm going to pray for you. These guys really mean business. These footballers. I think they've seen what God is doing. And it's better than going to idols. Is that not true? Hallelujah. All right, so before you shout, I want you to bring those who will come under the anointing. You don't need to do anything. You just listen to the instruction. This is what God is putting in my heart. And this category of people who will be coming out now by the Spirit as I'm speaking, and, and ushers, please, will, will make that very fast. This category of people who will be coming out right now, they are not coming out just for themselves. I'm seeing in the spirit that these are families that have been tied because I'm seeing chains around the legs of people. This has made people immobile. They are not able to make destiny progress. And God wants to visit people now. The time will come, I will ask you to shout. But for now, I'm just going to make that declaration. And then I want you to please bring those people out in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. You have revealed this. And every time you reveal, it is so that you will redeem every one of the people that I've seen in this vision right now. I declare by the spirit of grace, let that yoke leave now. Bring them out in the name of Jesus. You will not be able to stand it. No, this is we're talking of the great power of God. This is authority in the spirit. Please bring them out. Ali Shalako Siata, tied by darkness, your redemption comes and it comes speedily. Comes speedily. This is Koinonia. Please come. Hallelujah. Oh, my help has come. Oh, please bring them. of that word you will not be able to stand it if you if you are part of this prophecy the hand of God is coming upon you everyone who has been immobilized by life by destiny by witchcraft this grace is coming upon you and the Lord is bringing deliverance right now to everything there is an end surely there is an end please bring them out 
Jesus. If I were you, I would be praying that everything that has held me down, that I will not make progress in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, it must give way tonight. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is showing me a vision. Please listen. There is such power in this place. And in that vision, I'm seeing like the door of a prison. And I'm just seeing a hand turning a key. And I'm seeing the number 27. 27. I want to pray right now. Every family that has been locked, kept in bondage. I come in the name of Jesus Christ. At the count of three, I decree and declare. As that, if it's happening in the spirit, in the name of Jesus, that grace will rest upon you. Father, I stretch my hands as you have revealed to me everyone whose life and destiny has been caged. Every family that has been caged right now at the count of three be released. One, two, three. I open that prison door now. Bring them out. I open that prison door now. By the authority of the spirit, I open that prison door now. Bring them out. Let me pray. I just saw something for those in the overflow outside. Let me speak to those outside. I'm going to come to those inside, all the overflows, but those outside, in the name of Jesus, I want you to bring the people out right now, outside. I'm seen by the Spirit. The Lord is revealing something to me that there are people, watch this, I'm seeing a woman in the Spirit with a child, then she keeps losing the child. This is not physical, this is spiritual. There are people who have carried things but they've been losing it. Outside, I'm stretching my hands right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, everyone who is a victim of that, be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Outside, just the outside overflow. This is what God is revealing. I decree and declare everyone aborting destiny, aborting visions, losing things you should carry by the power that raised Christ from the dead. That spirit of loss and waste is hereby destroyed in Jesus' name. Hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Say, hi, 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 hi. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. The Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. Listen, there is fire that is burning here. And many, many people, many, many people, you will not escape this. I'm going to ask you to shout the name Jesus once. And as you pray, one of the things that God is visiting is curses that create patterns. Curses that create patterns of failure. Curses that create patterns of setback. Are you ready to shout that name? Father, I'm praying in the name of Jesus that as we shout that name that is above every name, every family, repetitive patterns, patterns of death, patterns of failure, patterns of destruction, let it give way right now. Are you ready, Koinonia? One, two, three, shout Jesus. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Negative patterns, negative circles, tying your life, tying your family, 
untying everything concerning your destiny bring them out i release you mother father be released sister brother be released from the north the south the east the west in the name of jesus be released hallelujah hallelujah i'm hearing in my spirit rebuke the spirit of disfavor this is the spirit responsible for shame and reproach i taught last week that word ichabod jabez was named jabez because the mother bore him in sorrow but the man got angry one day and said lord oh that thou wouldest bless me i want to pray the spirit that brings shame Shame in relationships, shame in career, shame in ministry. I'm praying right now. Anyone who has been a victim of shame and disfavor, be delivered now. 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 I prophesy to you, be delivered now. The Bible says, and my people shall never be ashamed. Shall never be ashamed. Shall never be ashamed. I'm hearing the name Becky. Becky. I'm sure that may be a short form of Rebecca. Becky, who is that person? You are tying, you are wearing a cloth the same color with the, what you are tying on your head. Becky. Becky, please, when you find the person, Becky, if I give a prophetic word, please don't just rush and come out because you are desperate. If it's not for you, just believe. I don't have to prophesy directly to you. Are we together? Yours is just to believe. Becky, in the name of Jesus, the person I'm seeing, well, I will pray. Hallelujah. Just come and stand here. No, no, my, relax, be patient. God has located you already, so you don't need to come and just be rolling on the floor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Becky, the Lord is showing me. I want to pray for someone here. The devil has been using your face and people have been seeing you in their dreams as an evil person. Like he uses your face. I'm praying. I just saw, I kept quiet because God was speaking to me on that. They you people go to bed and then they see your face causing destruction. They wake up believing that maybe you are involved in witchcraft. I don't know who that person is, but I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ everything that is turning giving a negative identity in the spirit before i come to the beckies in the name of jesus be delivered from it now <laughs> hallelujah becky i want to pray for you please look at me you see when god speaks a word like this it is because he wants to bring you deliverance not everybody is playing games i want you to believe there is authority in the prophetic word hallelujah and once he calls you even if he does not tell you anything the fact that he has called you and you have come you believe that you never come into his presence and go back the same hallelujah i want to pray for you there is a gentleman here i need to pray for you your brother is in jail your brother is in jail as i speak now he's in prison he's in jail and i want to pray because it is a spirit this this is a spirit of misfortune bad luck all kinds of evil things keep happening in the, to the people in your family now i want to pray two of you in front here the power of god is coming on you now i just saw fire on two of you in the name of jesus christ i decree and i declare by the power that raised christ from the dead as that grace rests on you two of you in front here in the name of jesus i'm declaring unto you that every limitation in your life you just keep them gently let it go father you called out becky i'm praying 
whatever it is that is a covenant that is sponsoring witchcraft in these families i declare by the fire of the holy spirit let it give way now let it give way now let it give way now i release you by the power of the holy spirit be set free right now you will never 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 return to this calamity again in the name of jesus christ there is someone your brother is in jail your brother is in prison this is what i'm seeing whether you are falling online or outside please don't tell lies make sure that you understand what i'm saying don't just come and stand emotionally make sure that this is true i want to pray for you in the name of jesus where is he where is your brother he is in sokoto he is a so soldier. Yes, sir. He's a soldier. Yes, sir. But he's in prison. Yes, sir. He is in Gadurum since six months ago. No, don't worry. I want to pray for you. Do you believe that God will bring him out? Yes, sir. I believe. You too, my friend? Yes, sir. My brother is in jail. The lady too? Yes, sir. Your brother? Yes, sir. Father, you are a God of mercy. In as much as we do not truncate law and order, we know that in the realm of the spirit, mercy triumphs over judgment. Because you have revealed, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands over these precious ones. Lord, they will come and stand on this altar and they will testify that you have been this good. In the name of Jesus, we introduce the mercy of God across systems and structures. And we pray, especially for those who were wrongly put in prison, I hope you know prison. A prison is where both good and bad people meet. Don't judge anybody you see in prison. You may be talking about Joseph. The prison and the cross are two mysterious places. Anybody you see on the cross, don't judge because you may be talking about Jesus. There are people on the cross who are not dying for their sins. There are people in the prison who are not suffering for their sins. These are two mysterious places. When you see people in the prison, and you see people on the cross yours is to pray because three people were on the cross two were victims of their calamities but one was there as a savior there were many people three people again were recorded in scripture the wine presser the baker and joseph the two were there justly but joseph was there as a deliverer in the making so the prison is a mysterious place is where both good and bad people meet but I'm praying for you because God has brought you out here. Let the power of the Holy Spirit, I use you as a point of contact to your loved ones. Every power that is bringing this satanic oppression over this family, let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone from January till now, you have lost three jobs. You got three jobs and you lost all the jobs. Three jobs and all of them have left. I'm not talking of something that somebody said come and manage you got a job and you still lost it three what i'm seeing in the spirit i want to pray for you and i'm using you to pray for every other person what is the spirit that makes you lose things that when good things enter your hand they don't stay can i pray for you koinonia in the name of jesus christ you got three jobs and lost them in abuja here what was the last job Last month, sir. Where? In Abuja, Jabi, here, sir. What job was that? Driving job, sir. Driving? Well, I'm a BSC holder, sir. But you are a BSC you holder. You are a BSC holder. Yes. I'm going to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Um, the most important thing is that God lifts you. There is nothing that is done with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Are we together now? It is better to drive with honor, even if you are a graduate, than to steal to kill and to destroy and let me say this here anybody who wants to come around your family this onslaught i'm going to be praying some serious prayers kidnapping and asking people to bring ransom a family that is still trying to feed and they just come and pack someone and say bring ransom 10 million 5 million and they enter for some families if they get into a debt of 2 million that is a transgenerational debt because with the state of that family, even in 10 years, they will not be able to pay. And yet in one week, they, can, they have to cough out that money. I'm praying for you. Any programming of darkness to stop you and waylay you on the road, 
or to come to your house and kidnap people or cause trouble i call upon the god of vengeance in the name of jesus may he visit the wicked may he visit the wicked for those of you who are in front here i stretch my hands towards you and in the name of jesus the son of the living god i decree and declare you had jobs and you lost when god gives he retains he keeps i'm praying for you in the name of jesus for your shame according to scripture receive double for your shame oh i release grace on you receive double in the name of jesus christ everyone say after me father shout it say father let my portion in life and destiny locate me now go ahead and pray let my portion god is a god of portions please open your mouth and pray let my portion that allotment for me in life and destiny extend that prayer to your children let my portion in life let my portion in destiny locate me let my portion in life my portion in destiny locate me someone pray in your prayer is your miracle in your prayer is your miracle let my portion let my portion locate me by the spirit of grace hallelujah now hear me hear me god is a god of portions that means it is never god's idea for you to be a slave under someone forever you can start and learn but eventually god gives you your space it's called rehoboth god has given us and this also means territorial establishment are we together now yes for a time period you are allowed to stay in a place that is not your own but with time when the god of portion visits you this is what happened to jacob jacob was in the house of laban it was not supposed to be forever but laban used divination and found out that joseph had been that um jacob it was because of jacob's presence he was increasing and he refused to let jacob go change wives did all change his wages and kept that man for over 20 years anybody coming in the spirit of laban to not allow you have your space in life and destiny stopping that word Rehoboth from becoming your reality you dig a well and the Philistines come to cover it you dig a well and they come to cover it may my God give you your space in life in destiny in your home in your business I say it again the God of portions may he give you your own space Do you believe this prayer now look at me please when jesus was about to have what we call the triumphant entry the bible tells us that he sent his disciples he said go to a street whose roads divide watch this you will see a colt tied there that no man including the owner had ridden on there are people who are caretakers of certain things it is not for them it was supposed to pass through them but the spirit of laban says it will not pass it will remain i pray for you anyone carrying any cult that you should use for your triumphant entry triumphant entry in business in marriage in family in ministry and is refusing to allow that cult get to you i pray for you may it be released now May it be released now. Go to a street whose a road whose streets divide, and you will see a cold. There are monies God gave men that is not for them. He made them prosper unusually in the business, not because of their transactional prowess. He knew that somebody. There are people today who have built properties they don't know why. That property is not just claiming people's things. This is not what I'm saying. Listen, please look up. Let me teach you something. There are two ways God blesses people. 
he blesses people by making you Abraham or he blesses you by making you Lord are we together not everyone will receive the mandate directly from God but everyone can be the partaker of the mandate if you are Lord and you are trying to prosper by being Abraham you will die hungry God called Abraham but Lord said I can still partake of it are we together now so you need to know whether you are Abraham or Lot. If you are Abraham, your mandate is to be faithful with what you have received because there is a Lot who is at the mercy of your obedience. If you are Lot, you must discern so that you do not break the relationship with Abraham because your prosperity is tied to your discernment. The first decision Lot took outside of Abraham's influence landed him in Sodom and Gomorrah. That means his prosperity was not a function of his wisdom. He was under a grace of Abraham. Hear what I'm telling you. There are many of you who, if God is to allow you learn all the business principles by yourself and start prospering, it may be till 2030 before you prosper. But he brings you after the order of Lot. It is one of the ways he redeems time by giving men favor. Because it takes time to learn the genuine secrets that produce lasting wealth. And the truth is that there are people who have gotten born again late. Before they now begin to learn these principles. A woman of 70 years, where is she going to learn 25 principles for prosperity? She's made the mistake she did not maximize destiny. But is God still a God of mercy? So God will bring Abraham to her. And she needs to have the wisdom of Lot. If you are Abraham, I am telling you, be faithful in hearing God. Because Lot, there are many Lots that are depending on your obedience. But if you are Lot, swallow your pride and honor Abraham. Because if you fight with Abraham, that is the end of your prosperity. The same Abraham that fought with Lot was the one who had to come and save Lot. And even in doing that, he lost his wife. You know what it means to lose your wife? The basis for your productivity. Pharaoh said, let the men go, but the women and children should remain. That means the men would die of old age, of natural cause, and there would not be transgenerational, there would not be continuity. Are we together? Please listen to what I'm telling you. I'm speaking to you prophetically. There are some of you right now, by the mercy of God, and because of the covenant God had with your parents, instead of taking 10 years to start learning the principles, the truth is that time has gone. You already have five children. Before you learn all the rudiments, so what God does as an act of his mercy is he will let you hear when he's speaking to Abraham. As Abraham moves, you come as Lot provided you can be faithful a day will come you will not even know who god spoke to and who god on who is following the mistake do you know the trouble between abraham and lot started from their men not them their men train the people around you to know why the anointing is in your life so that they do not you don't lose the anointing and lose favor i don't know why the spirit of god is speaking this through me i'm speaking to the entire globe listen to me there are people right now the reason why you will lose favor is because of your children you have not taught your children that the church god planted you in is the reason why god is honoring them and you are watching them dishonor the vessel that god is using to lift you learn from lot remember lot's wife but remember lot too Two of them have a story to tell. Are we together now? Know when you are Abraham and know when you are Lot. Not everybody will be Abraham. You can look onto Abraham, but not everybody will be Abraham. There are people today, God has granted them an unusual grace. They can sit down where they are every year. They can have opportunity to give up to 30 people jobs. And because of your relationship with them, out of those 30 slots, they will give you 3-3 three, three every year. Make sure you don't fight these kind of people. Because the day that happens, that it will be the day your child now just graduates from school and is ready for a job and that door is closed. I pray for someone. Whatever has taken you away from the blessing of Abraham as Lot, may my God, who is your God, bring restoration. May my God, who is your God, bring restoration. 
And if you are Abraham, I'm praying for you. The grace to stay until what God says manifests. May it happen for you. May that grace rest on you. So that all the lots connected to you will not wait in vain because of your disobedience. And Lot went with him. That was the wisest thing Lot did. And Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. When it was time for God to help the Ethiopian eunuch, he encouraged the servant Philip. He said, join this chariot for the sake of the man. Join this chariot. If you leave this man alone, confusion will kill him. If you leave this man alone, he will never be saved. Join this chariot. Can I tell you, beware of the people God brings in your life. There are destructive people I taught you, but there are people who are gifts. When you see other people joining your chariot, discern. If it's God that has sent them there, respect their presence. It's not idleness that brought them. God send them to your chariot so that you will understand the interpretation of what you are reading. You have opened the book of your destiny, but you cannot understand it. So God sends them to join the chariot. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can I pray for the sick now? Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle believe do you know reverend sam i got to find out that there are four i've discerned that there are four diseases that the devil is bringing to destroy people in the body of christ it didn't used to be an issue but it, the church seems to be keeping quiet over it and if we do not arise and pray number one is called cancer cancer Thank God for the research that is being done in medicine. But we need to pray and upgrade our levels of graces so that we can bring to end this, this demonic thing that is killing people. I know many people, sadly, who have died in the last two or three months because of this satanic thing. One time, I think it was a, some, maybe a few months ago, I was praying for people and then this beautiful young lady seven years this little girl swollen by that devilish thing you would think it is old people but now seven years what did the girl do satan for you cancer cancer number two that i want us to pray for is satan is beginning to creep and he's fighting the next generation in the church and he's using the tool of infertility let me tell you the truth I'm not a doctor but there are many people who are all right it is because of the coming of John that Elizabeth is suffering it has nothing to do with Elizabeth even though later we know that it is God's plan so that John will come just shortly after Jesus and not be discouraged but all the same infertility you will see somebody who is all right wife all right are we together or she would take in and then here comes this demonic satanic familiar spirit an encounter and we think it does not matter i don't want to you see territorial advancement and preserving the purposes of god is transgenerational every time satan begins to fight continuity there is a goal there is an agenda i speak in parables it's important for you to be discerning the next 10 years with this onslaught of infertility on the church is going to deplete the strength of believers to a point where we will go back to Egypt and become slaves. This thing is a strategy and we must pray. Number three, every madman Jesus saw in the Bible, he healed the person. There was one sickness Jesus did not tolerate. There were other sicknesses, some were healed, but madness was not one of it. To the point that Jesus crossed over to heal one person and return back. A madman in Gadara. This thing called mental health. It's creeping gradually in Nigeria, it's not too much. But in Europe, America, you see children and they tell you mental health. Someone can pick a, a, a knife, kill himself, 
kill the mother and begin to act i mean the stress that families especially in europe and us are going through because of mental health you have four children and three of them are almost like madmen you literally leave your destiny and you are focused at managing them every time you see distraction away from purpose it is satan's strategy when the nation of israel were serving the lord he said it is because they have straw stop giving them straw so that they will be busy looking for straw and they will not have the time to serve the lord this is number three are we together now this is very important the fourth one is not sickness per se like health but is the spirit of lack and poverty and satan is using the strategy of borrowing for as long as i am alive i will never watch the church of god go down economically it doesn't matter what people say or do not say it is part of the mandate to help god's people with dignity and integrity correct the errors that are around the whole teaching on wealth that brings materialism but to help god's people for god's sake to be empowered if an unbeliever is the one training your child because of lack, that child will serve the God of that unbeliever. There is only one reason, hear me believers, why Egypt goes to, I used to say one, but I found two reasons now. There is one, there are two reasons why Israel goes to Egypt. Number one is to learn wisdom and knowledge. Number two is hunger. Are we together? Genesis 42, 1 and 2, there was hunger and Jacob spoke to his sons. He saw that there was corn, but the location was wrong. There was supply. He saw that there was money, but the man who has that money is a cultist. But I am hungry and my husband has five children. My husband has six children. And the cultist is saying, come, you will work with me. You will bow to my God and you will earn a salary of 200,000. And church people are saying, don't worry. God is faithful. Love him anyhow. And the person is getting into trouble. Genesis 42, 1. And now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you look upon one another? Verse 2. I have heard that there is corn. The only problem is that the location is not a good place. Get thee down, Tita, and buy for us. Yes, I know that the man sacrifices people, but just go. We are hungry. I know that the money the man wants to give me as a man of God is blood money. But what will I do? If I don't collect it, the church will not be built. I know that you are not caught. You still bring it. The church needs to be empowered. It has become a disease. This thing called poverty. For as long as I'm alive and for as long as God gives me the privilege of leadership over this ministry, I have vowed before God and it's my covenant to you that among many things that you must carry in this destiny is the grace to live a life of dignity and honor. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant at the expense of their economic empowerment. I'm committed to bringing the whole counsel of God. Among the five benefits of God is that he satisfied your mouth with good things so that your days are renewed, your youth is renewed. Let's pray for the sick now. You deserve the glory. Please lay your hands. And the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship. As I bless your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. As we lift our hands in worship, as we bless your holy name, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. to pray for you you came here with someone who is sick you can lay hands on that person and 
we are honored to have I will always bless God for all the hospitals and the clinics that literally put these teachings during the miracle services for their patients there are literally clinics right now who are allowing either on screen or people using phones for their patients it's such an honor to be able to bring the healing power of Jesus to these places if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and I want you to believe in a healing Jesus remember part of the things available in this feast is his power to heal the Bible says the power of God was present to heal them but he only ended up healing one person I want to pray for you now believe believe only believe when I pray for you I'm going to give you instructions to check yourself when I say check yourself do it that if your neck could not move don't be afraid your feet could not move don't be afraid you came here with a walking aid don't be afraid your hands are unable to be lifted don't be afraid I will pray for you and let's see what God does tonight within the time that we have are you ready let's pray father in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we're here because we are believers we believe in the cross we believe in the blood of the eternal covenant that has brought eternal atonement for sin for sickness and Lord we pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I'm ministering to your people and to the nations many who are trusting God for all kinds of miracles in their bodies many of them holding death sentences this moment as medical reports many of them like the woman with the issue of blood they have spent their earnings they have spent their means of livelihood they have lost jobs because of ill health they've had many parts of their bodies deadened and weakened I'm praying right now, oh God, that you honor every word that comes from the lips of your servant. Therefore, I pray every spirit, my God, that is the, at the back of any disease, any infirmity, any health or mental distress, I command that spirit to give way now. I command that spirit to give way now in the name of jesus the son of the living god right now be healed i stretch my hands and i decree and declare your internal organs be healed now your heart be healed now brain tumors disappear now the lord is showing me someone you have a swelling at the back of your eye this is inside but it is affecting you in the name of Jesus the power of God is healing you right now there's someone you have it is not a thyroid I don't know if it's a thyroid problem it's like goiter but um, it's inside just inside within your neck and you are having a severe discomfort it's like some kind of ulcer some injury inside you feel the pain the power of God is touching you right now. Every heart problem be healed now. Someone is going to shout loud right now under the anointing. In the name of Jesus. God is correcting something in the body of that person. This is what I'm seeing. Every liver problem be healed now every damaged kidney jack back to life now i saw the same case that i want to mention now when i was ministering at yesterday in asaba i think it was yesterday either asaba or lagos i can't remember which there's someone you have a problem going to ease yourself to urinate it's like it's like you cannot pass urine freely i don't know what the name of the sickness is but it just comes in droplets you're not able and it's, it has severe pain this is what i'm seeing in the name of jesus the power of god is resting on you now Amen. there's someone you are having severe ulcer severe ulcer there are wounds inside you 
and and i mean if you're going through all kinds of excruciating pain i decree and declare be healed now i'm seeing someone the lord is showing me something it's a very interesting thing i'm seeing you go, you are going through severe pain almost like stomach cramps but this happens all the time always literally you cannot lie down i'm seeing you having to hold a pillow and just to lie on it in the name of jesus christ the power of god is touching you right now now every bone condition bone conditions you are not able to walk you are not able to lift up your hands in jesus name be healed now if you came with a neck collar or some bracelet around your neck or around your joints i decree and declare may the power of god touch you be healed now be healed now brain damage be healed now in the name of jesus sleep apnea be healed now in the name of jesus christ there's a disease called insomnia in the name of jesus be healed now the lord a miracle has happened there look at this bring her out we're still praying bring her out a miracle has happened there jesus in the name of jesus she's removed her neck collar give jesus praise look at this look at this don't be distracted we are still praying check them and make sure that let's pray we're still praying in the name of jesus christ now i'm praying for someone i don't know what problem you are having around your rib your your um, what they call it now um your ribs you feel severe pain you are a sickler this person you are a sickler in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare be healed now be healed now now um please don't be embarrassed by the case i'm calling there is someone i'm seeing the lord heal you you are a lady this is not just you lactating what is coming out is not breast milk this is something that is dangerous i will not say more than that but you are having a very serious situation you need help right now because with what i'm seeing that thing is degenerating and it's almost something that we don't want to say anything negative but in the name of jesus whoever that person is let the power of god touch you right where you are every shoulder pain be healed now you came here with any walking aid and you could not walk you're not able to move your legs i decree and declare that you begin to walk now i decree and declare that you begin to walk now let life and strength surge to your body right now in the name of jesus and seeing someone you could not lift your hands just as i'm lifting it now but in the name of jesus the power of god is touching you now whether i mentioned your case or not for sake of time be healed now outside be healed now all the other overflows be healed now online be healed now I want you to check yourself now begin to do what you could not do begin to do what you could not do there are miracles happening the moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you i like you to leave your seat right now let's take even if it's two or three miracles check yourself miracles are happening miracles are happening inside miracles are happening outside check your body bend over backwards lift your leg the moment you see that the power of god has touched you in fact the lord is showing me someone you are in the overflow outside when you came and sat down you could not see the screen clearly but as i'm speaking now i want you to look clearly you will see that the power of god has touched your right eye particularly your right eye a miracle has happened to you in the name of jesus let's celebrate them as they come while that is happening all the ushers please bring for me the prayer requests very quickly check yourself you find out that a miracle has happened i know that our time is gone i don't want you to sit back remember what i said about testimonies let's just have even if it's two three people come let's celebrate them let's celebrate them let's celebrate them koinonia is this how you celebrate miracles those who have received miracles from outside 
please make your way to the front. Check yourself. Do what you could not do. People are coming. Are you celebrating what Jesus is doing? All right, begin to submit your prayer request too. We are doing all this at the same time. My God, Jesus is touching people. Um, there's someone you have a severe pain at the left side of your neck. I want you to check it now. It was even swollen. You will check and see that it's gone. Gone forever in the name of Jesus. Let's take two or three testimonies very quickly. Yes, are you ready? Who is ready? Anyone who is ready, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sorry, Mama was having this problem last year. And Mama was having what now? Neck problem. Neck problem. Year. Yes. Then, but today she received her healing. She's today able she, to move her neck. Yes, she can move her. Healing. Can she hear me, Mama? Yes. Move your neck. Look at this. Look at this. Hallelujah. Look at this. Mama is saying she hallelujah. Removed, Someone she should removed say amen. It herself. Oh, she, she removed it she herself. Removed it herself. Uh, I removed Give it to her. Let her hold it. Let the devil see it. Mama, walk. Mama, go. Walk. Let the devil see you. Move your neck. Oh, hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. My goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Mama, we pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will go back and tell everybody in your house that you encountered Jesus at Koinonia. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's celebrate her. Next person. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I used to have this severe pain on my waist for more than two years now. More than two years? Yes, sir. Then there's another pain on my knee, such that standing up becomes very difficult. Sometimes, that of my waist, I have to walk like an old woman. Standing up, I have to act like an old woman, walk like this. And now, and now I'm very walk, free. even run. Ah! Oh, God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Dideo, Dideo, help me say, Oh, God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Dideo, Dideo, Oh, God of signs, Oh, God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Hallelujah, we give Jesus praise. He will never return to you again in Jesus' name. Next person, please. Let's do justice to time very quickly. I yes, please. You gave word of knowledge of toxinizes. She has had it for nine years. Tox Let us speak. So I've had it for nine years. Nine years? Yes. Medically verified? Yes. I was even asked to do a surgery for it. And now? It turned on me. Immediately you said the word. It felt very light. I could not sing for long before. I can't shout for long. But now, like, it feels very light. There's no pain at all. Shout on Satan, you are a liar. Satan, you are a liar. Come on now. In the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, please. Very quickly. Next person. You gave a word of knowledge of someone who could not urinate. Now he has had severe pain in his manhood oh my for a very long time. Immediately you gave that word of knowledge, the pain disappeared. Have you gone to check yourself? Y yes, I, I do treat it. I treat it. Uh, but now, the pain does not left the time I treat it. I still feel the pain. But now... I not Completely. Yes, I in the name of Jesus, that satanic thing leaves you forever. Amen. Koinonia, are you celebrating miracles? Amen. Yes, go ahead. Next person. Okay, yes, sir. Please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, the lady you mentioned with um, sickle cell. Sam, can you help us, by... please? Let's, let's hear the testimony very quickly. Okay. Please make sure you are submitting your request. There are ushers with the baskets. How many of you are yet to submit your request? Please do so very quickly. Do so whilst you're listening. Yes, please. Go ahead. I'm the lady you mentioned with sickle cell and pain. You are the sickle cell lady. Yes, I'm Having pain. the pain. Yeah, the pain was diagnosed as... Um, Gallstone, kidney gallstone. Kidney gallstone. Yes. When you started the prayer, I felt the pain, but right now I can't feel it anymore. Completely. Check yourself. Check yourself. It's gone. Don't cry. Come and manifest your power. Dideo, dideo. Manifest your power. Dideo, dideo. Look at me. Don't cry. 
Many of you may never know what it means to be a sickler, number one and then to have these kinds of situations i'm praying for you not only that god has healed this but may he do a miracle on your genotype in the name of jesus yes sir next person please very quickly very quickly so, Apostle, a very fantastic testimony yes please sir you mentioned my dad case for as long as i've known him he can't pee without pain and difficulty for as long as you yes wow. so last week he, i wanted to call him to send me money he told me that he wants to buy a drug and is over a hundred thousand because of his prostate uh, issue okay so, and i put him on speaker when you were praying i said daddy just you put him on speaker yeah, i said just hold the apostles about, and you mentioned this case that there's someone that has difficulty yes and immediately i told him to check himself he said he doesn't feel the pain anymore that is gone. the centurion said speak the word only in the name of Jesus, we pray for all family members connected across the globe who are not here on site. The same power that is bringing miracles to people here, we extend the same to any nation, any region, any territory. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for your dad, his healing remains permanent forever. In Jesus' name. Next person, very quickly. Apostle. Yes. Three, four years, bloody vision healed. She's in the overflow, but immediately you declare that word, she fell under the anointing and she can see properly now. She can see? Yes, sir. Her two eyes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. What happened to you? Uh, you, you, you made sure that... She's still under the anointing. Oh, she's under the anointing. When he came, he was not able to see the screen very well. Yes. You, you know, are the lady. I, I should look at you. I should look at you now. That I will see that I can see you clearly. And I looked at the screen. It was sharp. And it like... was... Oh, dear. Four years. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the God of wonders perfect this miracle. It will never, never return to you again. In Jesus' name. Yes, please, very quickly. Difficult, okay. Difficulty in hearing for...